Alright guys, Hatch Comic again say, hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Hydra could arguably have been the MVP of the season, but he's taken this opportunity to call out some of his rivals in the league who have effectively been too lazy to really step up their game. Sublan has brought in this Ordnance Glove strategy earlier in the season to use these cross-map nades on map like Karachi to take some serious competitive advantage. Hydra's not so happy with the way that the opposition reacted, but also a touch revealing as far as he's concerned just how much of a skill gap there is in the league. Players like Hydra, in his opinion, are simply way better than some of the other ones on some of these worst teams very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you're new as always i would greatly appreciate it just quickly as well i think it's the final weekends for the porsche north american championship series that crim is racing in or um you know whatever it is exactly i think it's the final round anyway i'm pretty sure crim must have already locked up this championship like there's no way that he hasn't and it's going to be at road america so yeah crim's going to be there this weekend probably putting the seal on what's been a great season for him couple of quick players on the top 20 a boozer does get number 14 in the end. Now, his numbers over the course of the season don't actually look great. But when you look at it from this perspective, I think you can see why, at the end of the year at least, a boozer was a real force. I mean number 14 player of the season he pretty much got better every single stage the first couple of stages he was on the sub that weren't ideal for him he's not an smg player once he moved to the full-time ar though things got dramatically better 84 rated 88 rated and then 95 rated at the world championship only played a couple of series there of course losing both of them but was very good in the series that he played you know the hill time as well during stage four was ridiculous and his numbers overall in terms of kd weren't like anything crazy but in terms of impact Impact, you know, kills per 10 and takeover moments. I think Abuja was actually right up there. So I'm not sure I'd have had him this high on my list personally. I think I had him probably a little bit lower on mine, but um, I think you can definitely justify Abuja being around about here. And I think he might well end up as the highest rated rookie of the year on this list, all things considered, right? So, like, if it had the entire year as the AR, that would have been interesting. But also, could he be poached elsewhere? Like, is it guaranteed that he's going to stay on the Seattle surge? Obviously, he's been very good for them, but, um, you know, will they consider? or will some other team try and poach a booster out of his contract or maybe he's a free agent anyway which I think might be possible as well so there's a couple of options there but um, you know, 14th goes to a boozer 13th then goes to Kenny who was phenomenal I think this year as well again look at his numbers it's like well nothing crazy about this but he does have the series damage record the number 2 KD in the grand finals of the season few other things that he was the best of the year and if you look at his numbers I think these are the kind of cards that show you obviously stage 4 wasn't great but KD really doesn't tell the entire story with a guy like Kenny and for many other players as well like his impact in terms of kills per 10 damage per 10 was actually very high for the majority of the season they won stage 3 of course and his player card ratings were very high as a result of that but his KD the entire time wasn't anything crazy even at champs I mean they were 4-0 and I thought Kenny was great at champs but um, to be fair part of the reason why his numbers here don't look great is because Pred stepped up, Shotzi stepped up, and at times Dashi stepped up. But I thought Kenny was really good at champs as well. I think the numbers backed that up to some degree also. So this is probably about right to me. The Optic players, I think you could have put Kenny higher, personally. If you want to look at it from an individual level, then this is probably about right. If you want to consider a little bit more in terms of what Kenny did for the team, then you can probably argue that Kenny could be a bit better than this, right? Is he, you know, was he better than a couple of the other guys in some of the top four teams? You can probably argue it right now this by the way speaking of guys like kenny simpita beasy and also some of the legends this is now the list of top earning players ever in competitive call of duty history it was for some time Krim, I think Artetis actually was number one. Then Krim just about like overtook him again somehow recently. I don't really know. But um, anyway, Cell, Simple, and Beezy are now number one, two, three. Now I'm sure that the likes of Krim and Scump and Formal and Clay and these other guys that are around back in the day, they're winning everything, that have been like, damn, you know, look, they've still won well over a million dollars in prize money. So what about a career? You know, not a bad career. But still, I'm sure they'll be thinking, damn, if I played today, I'd be raking it in because the likes of Krim, 38 event wins, 38 championships. Simba to Beezy, you know, they're sitting around about 10. But they've now won, and sure, a lot of this is, you know, second places. The money adds up, right? But it's $1.7 million pretty much for Beezy and Simp over their careers. So pretty crazy stuff. Beezy just been around a little bit longer than Simp. He played one more year, so a bit of more prize money for him. But I'm um, kind of crazy that the trio on Fayers are the highest earning players in the history of the league. And, you know, Shotzi ain't far away either. 
Lawler, of course, he's making progress up the list. And even Kenny is now top 10 of all time after his recent victory at the World Championship. But yeah, pretty crazy stuff to see. Of course, the World Cup is coming up soon as well. And this is, you know, there's going to be money dished out here as well. So not a bad time, of course, to be a pro player. I saw Michigan fan here, 004, talking about some of the sponsors as well for this World Cup, just to kind of show. And I don't, I guess this is like the entirety of the World Cup rather than just like the Call of Duty stuff. But, you know, nonetheless, it's a pretty impressive list. And of course, going into the World Cup, who are the favorites for the event? Faye is, according to the bookies, I think are still technically the favorites. That seems kind of doubtful to me. Optic are, you know, in some sense, the favorites because they just won the World Championship. Subliners, as in Cloud9, they're going to be good. Obviously, Toronto are going to be good. Thieves as well. How competitive can they be? Possibly quite significantly. Seattle Surge. People said at Champs, yes, they came top eight, but they should have done better. So very exciting for this one. This is well a like MVP odds for the tournament. Hydra is actually favoured to do it here, which is kind of interesting because... Like, Simp is number four, despite the fact that FaZe are maybe considered to be able to win the event. I think the thing is for FaZe is that there's just more contenders, right? Because if Subliners, okay, if Cloud9 win, Hydra will be the MVP. I think there's, it's very unlikely that's not going to be the case. Whereas for FaZe, you know, a number of players could be the MVP. So that's probably why you don't see it quite like this. Scrappy, Shotzi, Pred isn't far away. Kleenex, Draza, and Sib, actually. That's kind of like your top 10 theoretical MVP candidates. But speaking of Hydra, wanted to mention what he had to say and also what Attach had to say on Hydra. On Well, this was on the Drill Break and Work podcast that we did a few days ago now. Brilliant episode if you guys want to check out the entire thing. But Hydra kind of talks about the laziness of some of these players because... New York subliners, they prepped that ordnance stuff right in the part of the season. They threw the nades cross map, they got the kills on optic, and it was controversial at the time. The pros then decided, all right, well, instead of learning how to use this stuff, instead of learning some new ideas and some new spots and some new lead lineups, it's easier if we just gentlemen's agreement it so it doesn't have to be used anymore. And maybe it was too powerful, there's an argument to say. But this is what the pros do. You know, something happens and they say, all right, instead of maybe trying to increase the skill gap, because I, I didn't like it that the cross what needs could happen but i saw there was something in it right because if you are going to use the ordnance gloves to try and cross map a team with nades you're wasting your nades if you don't kill anybody so um, if you're the attacking team you have to weigh up okay do i go for this route this round and it's also a bit of a mind game when are they going to throw the nades when are they not going to throw the nades are they going to throw them here or there like are we going to have to take a slightly slower route to the bomb site to avoid it do we risk it this round to get an early plant down or whatever i think it does add a little bit more of interest I think it would be better if you could just do it with stun grenades. This is kind of what it used to be with fast, what was it called, like strong arm back in Ghost. People would use strong arm to throw a stun all the way across the map just to get information and to slow the other team down. That's probably fine. Using it for nades maybe is too far. I don't know. It was a debate at the time. The debate continues. But obviously Hydra is part of the team. As I look, these guys are just getting way too lazy. So for example, like the nades that we found mm. when we... When Caesar killed, like, uh, I think two of them. Like, on uh, Optic. Op oh, on yeah. Optic, on the Garashi. What, what was the name of the gloves? Ordnance. Ordnance, right. The Ordnance gloves. So everyone can have it, right? Everyone can play with it. So everyone can be playing the same game, which is nading like this cross that we did nade. Yeah. Everyone can do that. People don't want to, like, do the same thing back because they probably just, like, they think it's, like, overpowered but it's not like i don't know like i feel like people just are lazy probably and so when they are lazy they just choose to ga so they don't have to get used to those new things in that category of like ordnance nade, we were just above everyone just because we already like been using it yeah and people were just lazy to just be like oh let's actually work on it and find new things that they don't already have to just have better creativity. I think most pros know how to play COD. It just comes down to actually SQ in the moment. Yeah, for the most part. But I think there's a really big mental gap between a lot of pro players. I think it's a lot wider than you would think. There's there's actually only a very few pros that probably like 15 to 20 tops that actually understand how to play. A lot of pros play just to play. Like they're just playing the damn game. There ain't no thought process. There's no A to B. There's no formula. It's just fucking play. But it takes time to learn. So then there's some times when you know how to play and shit, but 
if you're not giving effort, you're just running around, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because you're not actually giving effort, setting things up, working together. Who's the smartest pro and who's the least aware? Oh, y'all trying to get me on a clip for sure. I mean, the top four, I mean, they just be the best players in the game. So the obvious ones, Scrap, Hydra, Simp, shots you're like the most aware. Like especially Hydra, like Hydra always knows where you're going to be. Same with Scrap. Scrap is always like ironed up. Like you don't really ever catch Scrap like lacking like he's always at least ironed up gonna hit you with a couple shots Marco spawn trapping phase on high risk control is peak smart gameplay yeah i mean that's the difference between like being the best sub in the game and the rest of the subs like paco simp shotzi are all like in a tier their own sub wise but like, i think paco is probably the best at it consistently being in a situation and knowing how what to do to make the most out of it like if paco's in your spawn spawn trapping you He's not gonna give you a free kill like easily. Like, he's not just gonna. You're not gonna clear him out of your spawn easily. Like he's gonna be in the most advantageous angle and spot to get multiple kills and stay alive and finesse and keep being annoying. Cause that's all you have to do. Your job when you're in spawn trapping them on high rise isn't to always get kills. Your job is to stay alive, shoot people on the side, and make them have to worry and look for you. Cause that allows your teammates to just stack the points or no, hop on the generators on B if they're on A, just hop in the boxes and shoot into their spawn while you just stay alive and get people one shot or kill them and just slide back and forth and finesse your life. So is Hydra right about the creativity that is potentially lacking from other teams in the league? I think like Subliners did a good job of it this season and um, obviously Octane's talking about it and uh, Jake have an Octane having a bit of a yap and forth here in the replies. So I thought that was pretty entertaining really, but is Hydra wrong? Probably not. But I did think it was interesting what Attach had to say on Hydra and other players to be fair, because there's been a feeling in the league, especially with the guns being easier to shoot than they previously were. Formal talked about this a lot recently, right, Tower? The weapons, you can just shoot so straight nowadays. Everyone's shooting straight because the aim assist is very strong. Back in Infinite Warfare, there was not much aim assist at all. It was difficult to shoot, and even the top players in the world are missing bullets all of the time. Nowadays, the general theory goes, oh, everyone shoots the same. I don't think they do, still, personally. Like, if you actually watch Scrappy or Hydra or some of the other real top players shoot. I still think they shoot differently. Their centering is better. They just miss less bullets. Like, you've got to think, right, even with the aim assist being strong, if I'm hitting 27, 28% of my bullets and some other players hitting 26%, like, that is going to be a significant amount more gunfight wins over time, even if it's not a dramatic difference in terms of the actual raw ability of the player. But obviously, there is more to it than just that, because as Attach was getting at about the overall skill gap in terms of knowledge and understanding and positioning and preparation, that is one one of the key reasons why Skump was so good. He always knew when to make the right play, when to um, wait for a gunfight, when to sit in a corner, when to wait for the guy to run around it, when to lay down and pre-aim, or when to be fast and aggressive. I think this is one thing that Pred is really good at as well, when he's confident, when he's playing confident, at um, knowing exactly what to do. And Hydra, and from an SMG perspective, and Simp as well, are probably some of the absolute best. I think this is the reason why nowadays, sure, everyone can shoot relative straight. There isn't a crazy skill gap there, although I think there is still one to some extent. It's more about the game knowledge, the IQ side of things, because Attach says, and he's probably right to say this, there are players at the bottom of the league, sure they're talented, but they're not talented in the right way, or they're not talented in the right way enough to be able to consistently win. And the top players are the top players. Scrappy is always topping up the damage sheet and the numbers because he's the best player all around from an AR perspective, and nobody else can compete with him, even if other players can also shoot straight. So thought that was a pretty interesting analysis really to show that like there's obviously a skill gap in the league the question has been is the skill gap more about team play or is there still actually an individual skill gap but i think you see from this season the fact that we had four different teams who were competitive this year every one of those team had effectively one mvp candidate and um, they were all a bit of a level above thought this was interesting though just to close out the video champs 2024 was shotzi winning his world championship wins were four years apart the record is six years so crimson won in 2014 obviously he also won in 2017 and then he won in 2020 so that was like his biggest gap between world championship wins was six years apart clay did it in 2015 2020 clay did it 2015 2019 and obviously karma aches etc so shotzi joins them at four years but it is possible that somebody is going to take this crown here from krim let's say simple or Abizi. if they win it again they'll be from 2019 to 2025 and that's six years or if shotzi wins it in 2026 that's six years as well so this 
record is maybe not that long for this world, but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.